as part of a Children's Bureau initiative to raise awareness of tribally engaged prevention and intervention efforts, the Center for Native Child and Family Resilience partnered with five tribal organizations, including the Aleut Community of St. Paul Island Tribal Government, to identify and enhance culturally-based programs designed to strengthen community and family resilience in American Indian and Alaska Native communities. The Center is committed to building the evidence base of tribal child welfare knowledge and practice through evaluation and sharing the knowledge gained through these projects with the field. The Tian Kunguks Initiative was developed by the Department of Community Safety and Peace, Aleut Community of St. Paul Island, to serve as a holistic approach to healing and wellness. Well, Tian Kunguks Initiative was developed in 2015 um, after we had removed all of our um, Indian Child Welfare Services from the Aleutian Pribilof of Islands Association in 2011. Um, the tribe decided in order to provide the best level of service that we were going to need to take back some of the services that were provided outside of the agency. So from 2011 until 2015, we worked on developing some of those um, community-based services such as um, getting our domestic violence shelter and sexual assault services up and running. Um, we opened up a transitional living house. What we decided to do was to take our tribal court, take our Department of Health and Human Services, and to take our Department of Community Safety and Peace and put them under this initiative umbrella and create a process where there is no wrong door, where confidentiality um, doesn't need to um, hinder services, but it's gonna help services by putting them all under this one umbrella. So TK actually stands for um, your health and wellness. So in, in Nongan, whenever you're asking somebody, um, how are you, you're not asking them about one part of their being, you're asking them about their whole being. So it's a concept instead of the English, um, meaning of how are you so we're, we're talking about your mental health your medical health your spiritual health the tian kanguk initiative is based in part on reclaiming personal sovereignty over your everyday decisions and through a process of beginning with the russians and slavery to hunt fur mammals like sea otters and uh, fur seals um, the sovereignty of the Unangan Aleut people has been whittled away uh, by folks who wanted to control them for the fur industry. So this project is about reclaiming uh, that strict sense of ethical sovereignty that the Unangan people have in their culture so that they make decisions all day long that are healthy uh, for themselves, for their family, and they're very careful not to bring shame or unnecessary suffering that comes from uh, poor decision making. And so it's accepted in their culture that uh, bad behavior is a false path. It's not a legitimate path to choose. So um, court systems are usually uh, a triage emergency room for when antisocial behaviors run afoul of the law. So I'm one of the first stops when there's a problem or a sickness in the community. And so this idea of holistic healing, a deep wellness and a personal ethical sovereignty fits perfectly with the tribal court because we have no interest in punishing people. We have interest in learning from our mistakes so that they don't happen again. And so the Tian Kangu TK initiative fits hand in glove with restorative justice principles and building people up so that they succeed, um, they feel strong. And so we decided that we would use that um, as the focus of our initiative um, and um, the concept of like living as one instead of focusing on the individual person. So we're not just treating one person in the family, we're treating the family 
as a whole. So if you come to me and say, um, I need to go on welfare assistance, we're going to meet with you to talk to you about like what's happening within the family structure that you're coming to us to seek welfare assistance. Are your housing needs being met? Are your basic needs being met? Do you have food? Um, do you have proper clothing for employment? Do you have those kinds of things that we all know that people need, um, number one, to be happy and healthy and two, to be resilient. So we we started this initiative to, to make sure that we were meeting people's needs and that we weren't sugarcoating and we weren't glossing over the actual underlying issues and that we were addressing those underlying issues as well as, as the major issues that we could see such as substance use issues. Well, it's simple because if you ever hear indigenous people talk about their culture and their history and their ceremonies, they call it medicine. And so all of us can understand that because we've had to go to the doctor and we want medicine to help us feel better. And we are finding after centuries of trying to assimilate indigenous native people uh, to get rid of their ceremonies, their tribalism, to get rid of their language, to make them stop eating their wild foods and, you know, behave more like uh, melting pot Americans. And now it is becoming discovered and known, what Native people have known all along, is that their culture and their ceremonies are medicine. So how do we heal the trauma and the injuries that have happened through this medicine making it relevant to today so not locking native people in the past in some kind of museum but making it re relevant and vital today uh, with these generations so that folks grow up strong they know who they are i can't overstate how important having an identity is to your resilience. If you're not sure where you're anchored and you don't have the roots, uh, a storm can blow you over. Uh, but Native people are reconnecting with these uh, centuries old, since time immemorial roots, and they're finding it's making them strong. I also want to take a moment to say that healing from historical trauma can become a new strength in and of itself. So a lot of people talk about getting past the trauma and almost shuffling it away, forgetting about it once you're healed. But I think that we're missing an opportunity. There's a metaphor that if you break a rope but then tie it back together uh, stronger, it actually can withstand more pressure. So the healing of a muscle is what makes it stronger. So it's not to pretend that trauma didn't happen, but to heal from it and then use that as a springboard to greater strength. Whereas trauma now can become a strength instead of some kind of past problem that needs to be gotten over with and forgotten about. Yeah, the Tribal Council, we talked and talked and talked about like what services are needed in St. Paul, um, what was missing, how do we, you know, use this new status and the new funds that we were able to reclaim from APIA to, to practice the culture, to keep the community strong and healthy and resilient. And we, we did talk about making sure that we're we're not addressing um, one area in the family that we're addressing the whole family in general we can't send somebody with substance use out to residential treatment for them to come home to a family that's um, readily and still you know using substances we have to address the whole family as a whole so we talked about what would it take in order to treat the family as a whole so creating you know the tk plan for the, for the whole family instead of the individual, making sure that these plans are actually individualized for each and every family member in the home. They're not cookie cutters. We really are digging down to the root causes of why um, they're coming to us and they're seeking the services or why they're being referred to us for services. So really digging down into um, what do they need? Is it, do they need to go 
um, and be a part of a cultural activity, singing, dancing, drumming, um, language revitalization? Is it that they just need their basic needs met for food, clothing, shelter, um, those things? So making sure that we provide those services and understand the families at that basic level. There's a, a man, his name is Mark, and Mark does traditional kayak building. He does um, um, Ikea Inulata, which are traditional sea kayaks. And while he is a Caucasian man, he's studied um, these sea bearing vessels for a really long time and he's, he's learned the traditional methods. So we've sent um, people on our caseloads to um, California to work with Mark um, on relearning how to how to build um, the Ulukta and the Ikea. We brought Mark to St. Paul in order to show um, the community how to go because some of the the pieces of the Ulukta and the Ikea have to be um, found locally because that's kind of how how they're built. So doing a lot of like beach combing and, and looking at driftwood. There's no trees in St. Paul, but there's a lot of wood and trees and stuff that are washed up on shore from other places. So taking people out and showing them how to look at what other people might consider just driftwood or just, you know, um, trash that's washed up on the beach, how to use these materials in order to create this beautiful piece of artwork. You'll see it in our River of Change we have. Um, the Electa, which are, are sea-bearing kayaks that hold two people. And Iki is a sea-bearing kayak that holds one individual purpose. These were actually used in the traditional times to go out and um, hunt whales and seals and sea lions and fish. Um, and people were really, really good at it. And they used a spear in these really small traditional kayaks. So it's more than just um, learning how to build this, right? It's more about um, the process of like putting my blood, sweat, and tears and soul into making this traditional kayak of, of people that are long gone and, and remembering that they were able to take these out into the, into the sea, into the Bering Sea um, in a tumultuous sea and they were able to sustain life um, on these. So it's, it's more about that. It's like I said, it's, it's, it's one thing to go and buy a kayak. It's something else to, to build one with your hands. It's a, a really a lot of work to build one of those. Um, Ikea or Lukta takes about a month, if not maybe more than that. So that's a, another reason that um, when we were thinking about what services are we gonna put into place? What, what practices um, or what evidence-based practices are are going to be able to serve our community. There's not very many that you can find that are close enough to serve the people of St. Paul, but we did find one called the Healing of the Canoe. And so we were able to use that fundamental practice and adapt it for St. Paul and adapt um, the canoe um, for our traditional Ikea or Electa um, to make that happen. And we created an 18 month process out of that. So there's you're addressing everything from suicidal ideation to substance use to um, parenting, mental health, spiritual needs, all in this one curriculum. And we use it a lot because it touches on so much and it's just such a fundamental piece um, to bring back. And in this program, you're learning part of your language because you have to be able to introduce yourself in Nungam Tanu. You have to be able to um, talk about the land in which you come from. It's what they call it, uh, Tuna Ami. Um, very beautiful in, in my opinion because it's a concept and not how we just think like, oh, I live in Anchorage. Part of our um, camps that we offer because we, we actually don't have childcare in our community and I don't think that St. Paul um, buys into some of the traditional things that you would see um, in Anchorage or in mainstream communities. So in the summer, we provide basically a cultural camp um, every every week um, of the entire summer to make sure that kids have things to do um, and are occupied. We do marine debris cleanup. We, um, after the kids go and pick up all of the marine debris, 
we have these scientists who come and they decide um, which sea creature they're going to create uh, from all of the debris that they've um, picked up. We also use RS therapy um, for some of our people who are in our services. So that was another thing. So one is like, there's not really, we don't have um, a Color Me Mine or any of those type of places that you could go to, but we took one building, our community advocacy center decided that um, this would be a place that we would do artist therapy. So we have different rooms set up for different mediums. In the basement, we have a kelm and um, a pottery studio where kids get to come in and they are taught how to um, manipulate the clay. And it goes all the way from like a, bo uh, a block of clay into whatever whatever they wanted to create. So we actually have a kiln, so we're able to fire and, and paint them right there um, at our community art center. We have, like I said, painting, like acrylic paints. We have beading. Uh, we do a lot of uh, uh, seal fur, fur seal art, like so sewing. And so honestly, there's just not a lot of evidence um, in these communities because there's just a lack of trust um, in the process. For St. Paul, we're, we're just a really remote community um, with a really small population. And something to think about is, you know, there's over 500 federally, federally recognized tribes, 229 of them in Alaska. Every single tribe is different. Every community is different. Every secular community is different. So how are you going to create an evidence-based practice geared towards um, Tuna and me, um, the Unagan people of St. Paul, um, based on a community that doesn't represent them. The process was different because the community was able to be involved. We did hold focus groups um, in different community meetings in order to get the community involved. They came to the table, they talked about, you know, their history, their culture, their wants, their needs. Um, um, in their way of life. So we were able to use that knowledge in order to create a program based on what the community said that it wanted and what the community said it needs. Um, and that's, that's a better way to create a practice-based evidence, getting buy-in from the community and when you know that the community's got stake in um, the product that you're creating for them. Well, I've been working uh, with Indigenous Native people in Indian Country now for almost 25 years and participating in the TK Initiative Mind Mapping Project. I think I can easily say was the most valuable thing I've been involved in yet. And it brought together the entire team. Uh, first, we had a talented artist that brought forward the image and everyone felt comfortable to express themselves and to build and to change and to make suggestions and to try things on and then put them down. And through this process of months of a group brainstorm, and you have to create a safe environment, uh, particularly a lot of Native uh, people are very soft-spoken and unlike me, aren't uh, busy being boisterous to be heard, to, to, um, to grab attention. So you have to create quiet and a safe place for still small voices to come out and it happened. And so we were able to build a mind map image and concepts that captured this program beautifully and inspired all of us, um, and I'm still inspired by it. So it was extremely valuable. Well, it's interesting. The TK Initiative is innovative and it's not. It's using ancient age old human truths to try to heal and move forward. So each tribe and native people have their own collection of stories and ceremonies and songs and truths that have been handed down uh, through the millennia. So it is never, um, it is never the intent of the TK Initiative or the Unangan people to supplant the wisdom that's already can be harvested 
from local gardens, wherever that tribe may be. So the concepts and the themes will feel very natural um, and to be able to inc be incorporated by each community through their own lens, with their own color and their own stories. So the main processes and the main themes can be replicated easily and will feel natural to all Native communities. And then um, with that model, it needs to be made personal for that community. Um, taking outside models, whether non-tribal or from other Native communities, and, and cake topping them onto communities has never really been a successful approach. So we offer both the Benchbrook and the TK Initiative as useful starting points. Make it your own so that it works for your people. And the TK Initiative have collaborated to develop a program manual and supporting implementation guide these materials will help organizations or tribes that would like to implement this program in their community to do so in ways that are congruent with their culture, values, rituals, and communities. To learn more about the Tian Kungrooks Initiative and access program materials, visit the CNCFR website. The Center for Native Child and Family Resilience was funded by the Children's Bureau, Administration for Children and Families, U.S. Department of Health and Human Services under Cooperative Agreement Number 90CA1853. The contents of this product are solely the responsibility of JBS International Incorporated and do not necessarily reflect the official views of the Children's Bureau.